sometimes I find something new about Unreal Engine, something that's a little bit hidden away that kind of changes things, changes how I, how, how I do things in, in the engine. And this is one of those things. It's called a light propagation volume, which we're going to enable with some, uh, a little bit of trickery, which I'll get to in a little bit. For now though, the first thing we want to do is just make a new level to get started, make a new empty level, and we'll add in the basics. So we'll need our skybox, BP sky sphere, and make sure that we just hit reset here, get it all on zero. We'll want our skylight, which we also want to set to all zeros. We want a directional light, just like that, match to all zeros as well. And uh, I suppose we'll keep that angle. Click your sky sphere so that we can set our directional light as the sun. There we go. So far, so good. Clean this up. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. There's our directional light. And we will also need a post process volume. Drag in a post process. Also set this. Uh, well, we can put it anywhere because we're going to need to set it to unbound. So we'll just click up here in the search bar, find unbound, and uh, grab our skylight, make sure it's movable. Grab our directional light, make sure that's movable as well. And uh, we're about ready to get started. And the only thing that we'll do here before we we uh, move on to uh, you know the, the good stuff is we'll we'll drop in some uh, some props here. Uh, let's find our starter content. Uh, come into shapes, and we'll get a cube. This will be our floor. Uh, reset the position, and then just make it big so we have a bit of a floor to play with. Something like that, and we'll get uh, some more cubes here and use them as sort of things that we can, so that we can see shadows, so that we can see our indirect lighting as, uh, as we play with these effects. So I'm just going to make a couple of, a couple of big blocks here so that we can see some stuff. Might even change the angle of the directional light. A bit like that. This is pretty simple stuff, obviously, we're just getting started. Uh, a couple more, why not? Put some, put some things around. There we go. This will do. And let's see. We'll uh, where's our weld outliner? Let's grab, grab these cubes. Come to details and see if we can override our light map resolution. Set it up to something like five twelve. Also, make sure that these are all set to movable as well. We want dynamic lighting for this scene. So this effect is going to be a little more intensive than if we use static. But there's really really no way around that i'm afraid uh so what's next well we can save our level so we'll come up save current as in our maps folder let's call it we'll call it our light prop map light prop map <laughs> and uh hit enter and we're pretty much good to get started so now uh we'll just file save all and then well close down the engine boom we'll just get rid of that and now uh, in your, uh, wherever you have the, the engine installed, uh, come down here to the version, I'm using 4.20, then in engine, then in config, scroll down to console variables, and we come up with this little text file here that we can edit and uh, add some things to. So we'll make ourselves a new line at the bottom, and we type in r dot light uh, propagation volume space equals space one. And we're done. This enables, in fact, we'll get rid of these spaces here because I'm seeing some syntax in the above lines. So we'll save that, close down our config variables, and then open the engine back up again. So here we are back in our editor window. Let's just navigate to where we saved our map just now, the lap prop map. Open this guy up, and we are back in business. The next step is to come up to edit and then project settings, which will open up our uh, you know, base settings for our project, obviously. We need to find rendering, but we can go up here to all settings and just search in this bar here for any setting that we want. And uh, the first thing we want to change is generate uh, generate mesh distance fields, which we want to turn on. It's going to need to, to restart, that's fine. We'll uh, uh, enable the other things that we need. One being um, static lighting. Allow static lighting. We want to turn this off so that all of our lights are now dynamic. So we've got just dynamic lighting in our scene. And then the next thing to do is just restart the engine. Four to six weeks later. So here we are back in the scene. It took a few minutes, so don't freak out if it takes a while for your engine to restart. There's a lot of back-end calculation going on. The, the engine has to recompute a lot of different ways that it's calculating light and shading. But once it's open, 
the most striking thing you'll notice first of all is that it looks like garbage you know all these all these meshes have this weird shadow water factoring on them it's all being caused by this skylight which we're about to render obsolete so at the moment it's set to movable and that's really destroying the uh the overall look of the scene we can set it to stationary to sort of kind of correct these things so you still have the option of using a, a skylight if you choose to and if we set it to static all of that ambient light is uh is destroyed because we're no longer computing uh static lighting so we can just straight up delete the skylight and move forward and you'll also notice that we can no longer build lighting anymore we're not using static static lighting whatsoever but if you still have build data in the scene that you want to get rid of uh grab your directional no no it's uh world settings get your world settings and type force force no pre-computed lighting which if we check uh, it'll give us this message saying that we have to rebuild it once that'll propagate the effect and uh remove all of the all of the uh the pre-computed lighting you have that build data file that gets generated when you when you build the lighting so with that all done we can have a look at how the actual effect works so you've got your directional light here selected we go up to details let's search for we'll search for indirect lighting and we turn on dynamic indirect lighting and as you can see it sort of warms itself up it, it casts this this beautiful soft lighting all over the scene it still looks a little bit uh, a little bit dodgy we can change the indirect lighting intensity here so we have some uh, you know some brightness control here seeing some auto exposure let's click our uh, post process volume and we'll get some exposure controlled with let's get our minimum and maximum brightness and we'll match these values just to lock just to lock our uh, our exposure we'll set it to two so now it's uh it's not so it's going to be locked at the same uh the same exposure settings for the entire scene this is just good practice anyway because you don't want that that weird you know, uh, fade and, and, and drop back that you get if you're playing around with different lightings, if you get up close to objects and that kind of thing. So with your exposure set and uh, still with our, pro our post-process volume selected, just type in light propagation. What's going on here? Uh, rendering features. So here's rendering features and here we have our light propagation volume settings uh, down here in this little drop down. So let's check all of these little boxes here. We have some settings that we can play with. For one, there's the intensity, which gives us a little more control over it from the volume itself, and the size, which is the big one. But the bigger the size we make, the sort of more, well, the better that it looks, the, the more it's going to soften out and uh, give us this, this great effect. And we can drop this down to zero if we really wanted to. This uh, will also affect distance quite well. So we can yeah, have all these different controls for how to make our light propagation volume really pop out in the scene. Set it to something higher so that it looks really, really nice. And uh, there we go. What else can we have a look at? Well, if we add some more meshes into the scene, for example, this, this sphere, things like this, we can see how it's, uh, how it's being affected by our light propagation volume and how that ambient lighting is going to change based on the position of the, of the object. We could also change the, uh, the light map uh, resolution of all these objects to have a little bit more control over how that's popping up. Let's see, there's the, well, the indirect uh, lighting intensity from our, from our directional light. We can set this down quite low to get some darker shadows. And we have that extra control in our uh, volume as well. So let's have another look at, I don't know why that's showing up. Perhaps because it's a, it's a developer enabled thing. We can crank up the intensity. We can drop that down to zero to get that block lighting. Let's grab our sphere and change around the, the light map. Let's override, set this up higher. Uh, shouldn't really matter because it's all dynamic lights. And uh, so, well, yeah, this is this is light propagation volumes in Unreal Engine. Very, very cool effect. I'm a, I've been having a blast playing with it for the last uh, the last little while. And there's uh, there's more advanced settings here that we could also. Uh, we can also play with like the fade range, which will have to do with distance as we get further and further away from the from the objects that are being lit. Uh, there's the intensity, which will change how brightly it appears in the scene. There will be this interesting sort of fade effect. So set set your options and then then wait a second or so so that it sort of catches up with the with the new change. We have secondary occlusion, occlusion intensity, diffuse occlusion. We have a lot of different things that we can play with in order to you know, to, to experiment and get the type of effects that we really like. We've also got uh, some of our shadow uh, settings in our directional light here. So if you click your light, uh, find the shadows, we can change up the shadow resolution scale. 
Uh, there's the shadow bias, which will change sort of how, well, how biased the shadow appears on different objects. There's the sharpening filter, so we can soften or sharpen our filters as we want. The bias will also affect, so if we set the bias down to zero or close to zero, you can see that it sort of makes these, these soft edges at the base of some of these objects work because if the bias is set too high, it's going to look very strange when, I'm uh, oh, not the bias, I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the bias. So if we're away from objects and the bias is set high, you can see that the, the shadows kind of stop, uh, stop meeting at the bottom of objects. So we can set that down lower to correct some more of those interesting shadow options. Although on rounded surfaces, it might, it might take a little bit of fiddling. As you can see, there's some artifacting going on, but there are settings that we can affect to, uh, to correct a lot of these things. So that's, uh, that's about the end of the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And before I go, I'd like to remind you all that if you'd like to support the channel and, and support what I do, you can make a one-time uh, donation on PayPal, or you can head over to my Gumroad page and get something in return. So definitely give this a go, because it's a good alternative to the skylights, which I've always found to be kind of buggy. You know, they, they kind of break a bit and they're a bit tricky to refresh and that kind of thing. And this is a, in my opinion, it's a better way to do it. You know, you get a, a bit more control, you get a bit more sort of variance in the way that it's propagated throughout the scene. And it looks great. So yeah, open up your projects, have a play around with it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'll see you then.